I am really uh, taking the time to understand my students. It's important that I know um, what languages they speak at home, um, maybe even know a little bit about their culture. We know that when students have the opportunity to speak in their home language, uh, they feel more comfortable and they are more likely to really try to understand the content that's being presented to them. Shifts in the Common Core state standards and the shifts in um, the national standards, they're more rigorous now for both content mm -hmm. and for language. And so it's important that they all feel successful in being able to access the content through their language. It's important for all of our students, uh, but it's most important for our English language learners because every word that they're reading or that they're writing, it's a little more difficult, it's a little more challenging. They're going through more. Uh, and so by talking about the words that they're using, by talking about the language that we want them to use, we're just setting them up for success uh, so that they can also understand the reading, um, be successful at writing. Right, uh, and feel more successful in class. You know, if I'm making those connections for them, mm -hmm. this is what you see in your language, this is what we see in Spanish, this is what we maybe see in, even in Arabic, if there are some patterns that we can find. This is what you see in your language, and then this is how we do it in English, and here's why. Um, we're, we're recognizing that um, the patterns that you see in your own native language can help you be successful in English. If nobody makes that connection for me as a, as a student who speaks multiple languages, uh, then I can't be successful. And I think it helps them feel valued, like my I language is, mm -hmm. is valued. So we started out today with reading a book called Renee Has Two Last Names. And as we read that book, we did the read a little, chat a little structure so that students had an opportunity to process content throughout. We chose a book um, that had cultural relevance, uh, particularly to English language learners, and one group of English language learners in this case, uh, students who have two last names. Um, one of the first things that happened in the room today is yeah. a student literally was like, I have two last names, and, and then like about six four more, more. <laughs> like, I have two last names. And so by doing that, you know, the students are more engaged, they're more interested, uh, and also they might be able to identify a little bit with the emotions that that character is feeling. They might have slumped their shoulders before. They right. might have felt disappointed. Um, and so that's going to help them go through that analysis process a little more successfully. This book is called Renee Has Two Last Names. And it's about this little boy named Renee. Renee is the main character in this story. And Renee is from El Salvador. And in El Salvador, he has two last names. Everybody calls him by these two last names. His teacher calls him by these two last names. His friends call him by these two last names. Everybody calls him by these two last names. And he loves his two last names. But then guess what? Guess what? He then moved to the United States. And when he moved to the United States, what he noticed was people started dropping one of his last names. So they started only calling him by one last name. Um, I have two last names. Oh, you do? That's fantastic. Does anyone else have two last names? You, one, two, three, four, five of you. Wow, that's a lot. You know what? I sometimes go by Chavez Tebow, and sometimes I go just by Tebow. Last names are pretty important, aren't they? Okay. On my first day at my new school, my teacher, Mrs. Soria, gave me a sticker that said, Rene Colato. The sticker was missing my second last name. Maybe Ms. Soria ran out of ink. I took my pencil and added it. Now it looked right. Rene Colato Lainez. One of the other pieces that we built in is we were really strategic about the partner work. So yeah. we wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity not only to reflect about um, what they noticed or what they mm -hmm. wondered or what they remembered on their own, but to have an opportunity to process that content with their partner. And then they were able to share it out with the whole group. So if you noticed, I was going around and really listening for what we wanted to be able to bring out. I was listening to the conversations. I was listening for them to be able to use those sentences, listening to make sure that what they said made sense. And then I was calling one or two people to be able to share out to the whole group so that we could all have that same understanding before mm -hmm. we moved on. So now I'm thinking back about what we just read. 
And one thing that I'm wondering about this story is, I wonder why Renee has two last names. I want you to now think, and when you share with your partner, I want you to, I want you to either say, I remember from the story, I wonder from the story, or I noticed from the story. That's what I'm going to be listening for in your conversations today. Okay? Ready? Please begin sharing with your elbow partner. Say that one more time. I wonder if his friends are going to keep laughing. Oh, or if they're going to, if he's, if he's going to make friends with them. Can you share that out to the whole class? Okay. What did you I notice? I noticed that at the end of the story, um, his friends that were making fun of his mom last name said that it was a really good last name. Oh, it was those same friends? Good. Can you share that out for us? A story like Renee Has Two Last Names is a powerful book. The characters are changing throughout it. They're experiencing all of these different emotions. Students need skills, particularly English language learners, to be able to get at that emotion. And so that's what we were doing today is we were giving them those skills. The idea is, is that a student could then apply this later. They might, they might use the graphic organizer or they might not, but now they might be specifically reading for verbs, mm -hmm. taking those verbs and helping or using those verbs to help them um, identify character emotions. And they understand how language influences meaning or they understand yes. how language impacts what they're doing. So I think that um, that is a really added benefit. So when we're thinking about uh, the shifts that the Common Core are asking us to make, we know that we really want students to be critical thinkers. We want them to have access to reading. We want them to have access to writing. We want them to have access to complex text. But more than that, we want 100% of students to have access to 100% of content. And the only way to do that is to give them the skills that they need uh, to be able to have that access.